So these are state-of-the-art quantum processors who have some faster computational power anywhere else in the world. I am Pin, a physically independent neural network invented by Dr. Will Castor. Can you prove that you are self-aware? That's a difficult challenge, Dr. Tan. Can you prove that you are? This whole movie is about the development of artificial intelligence and a situation that gets out of hand. I play Will Castor, who is a scientist who's broadening horizons of artificial intelligence. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. Professor? I call it transcendence. Transcendence is the uploading of a human brain to a supercomputer, and the duplication of every synapse, every neuron, every bit of activity in the human brain into a machine. The combination of technology and biology. I think it's inevitable. We did a fair bit of research and we talked to a lot of different people in this field. What was astounding to us was how advanced technology was and how close we were and things that I had always thought were just science fiction as being a reality. Will's body is dying, but his mind is a pattern of electrical signals. We can upload his consciousness. We can save him. Certainly it's a science fiction movie, so it's got its touch of fantasy, if you will. But the, the root of a lot of the issues discussed, certainly in the first half of the movie, are happening right now. How would we map the human brain? Issues in nanotechnology, right? How you make very small things that can be useful to humans. Will, will there be ethical quandaries when you start to do this? I think these are themes the movie sort of touches on. Absolutely. Revolutionary independence from technology, rift. They're determined to stop any attempt at what you call transcendence. It's about how technology affects people's opinions on life and death. The idea of this film is definitely becoming less science fiction. This idea of human beings interacting with technology, with computers, with tablets in a way never before thought of, you can see what 10 years, 20 years from now the world could look like. And it's a very interesting and potentially troubling development. We don't know what the future will bring, but we are co-evolving with technology. And I think the movie is around hard questions that humanity has been asking for a long time. If we missed anything, anything, a thought, a childhood memory, how will you know what you're dealing with? It's really about the constant struggle between technology and humanity and what makes us human and how much can we merge with technology and still remain human. Oh my God. The idea that a loved one's consciousness could be preserved such that you could interact with that person on your computer and talk to you every day as though they were there. It was very seductive. It's that my mind has been set free. We talked to this brain scientist at Caltech, and I said, how far-fetched is this? And he went, 30 years. And I said, essentially, you're talking about immortality. And he went, yes. This is astounding. I'm fascinated with this plot because my strategy, my concept, the initiative which I am doing is about creating the artificial body for the human being. So my view is that what is described in the film will be absolutely achievable just in 20 or 30 years. People feel what they don't understand they always have. Whether or not it's going to happen is an open question. Although every technological advance that happens is just as unexpected as the earlier one. Welcome. And so if a technological singularity happens, it's not going to be anything like we can predict. I mean, the obvious reaction is, okay, that's interfering with human nature. That's augmenting humankind. And I think anyone's reaction there is to question the right of someone to do that. I need to expand. I need more power. I'm one of those guys who thinks I'm probably taking it too far. The danger to virtually be God. So how do we fight it? Be God. In this situation, we only have one transcendent mind. Imagine if you had a hundred. What happens to the rest of us? Whatever it is, it's building an army out there. Our nanotechnology is capable of creating robots out of humans. So that's where we take it to another level in terms of science fiction. The real will die. This film will force people to ask questions. How far should any of it go? They don't know the danger. That kind of intelligence in the wrong hands could be quite devastating. What is this? It's evolution. They all realize then this has gone beyond what they first imagined. They're into something extraordinary. I think the best kind of movies are the ones that get people to think and get people to talk about different ideas. And I think that this movie is definitely one of those. It's my hope that people think carefully whether technology can be used for the betterment of mankind or to its detriment. This is the future. This is not our future. If we don't stop him, it will be the end of mankind as we know it. Imagine a machine with a full range of human emotion. I have.
I've never worked with a first-time director that has as much experience as Wally has. It really feels like he's been doing it forever. Its analytical power will be greater than the collective intelligence of every person born in the history of the world. All of us feel really honored to be on his first feature. He was seamless. I always wanted to get into the film industry, and as a kid wanted to be a director. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. Professor? I call it transcendence. Maybe it was all inevitable. An unavoidable collision between mankind and technology. There was something intrinsically very gripping about the story. The idea of this film is definitely becoming less science fiction. An AI is like any intelligence. It has needs. It'll start to evolve. In our film, transcendence is the uploading of a human brain to a supercomputer. We can upload his consciousness. We can save him. Not like this. It's a sci-fi movie about a man who uploads his consciousness into a computer in order to sustain his life. What's interesting about Wally is that he was transitioning into being a director. He's DP'd many, many great films, and yet he's coming with this sort of first time as passion. He knew exactly what he wanted out of the scene. Oh my God. Snap my mind has been set free. One of Wally's biggest assets is he listens very well and responds to that. I need more power. This is not well. Shut it down. Shut it's no it down. It's him. Wally spoke the language of film in a way that we felt really confident that he could deliver. His work as a cinematographer, a very broad range of film skills. What is this? It's evolution. This is astounding. On a visual standpoint, I understood where he wanted to go with the film. Your friends crossed the line. They don't know the danger. Where are you going? Everywhere. I think Wally is having a great time. So the rest of us are having fun with it. He makes you feel very safe as an actor. So how do we fight it? You can't. He truly wants to make the best film and he cares a lot about it. Evelyn! Oh, yeah. This has gone too far, Will. Stop it! This is the future. I thoroughly enjoy every second because he keeps a set light. This is not our future. He did a great, great job. You've changed. To be surrounded by just an incredible group of people. Oh, that's fantastic. There wasn't a day on that set where we weren't enjoying ourselves. Good evening, Donald Buchanan. It knows me. Of course it does. DMV record, social media. An artificial intelligence is like any intelligence. It'll start to grow, to evolve. Imagine a machine with a full range of human emotion. Its intelligence will be greater than every person born in the history of the world. This whole movie is about the development of artificial intelligence and a situation that gets out of hand. People feel what they don't understand, they always have. Professor? A series of attacks conducted by a radical anti-tech group known as Rift. After Will Caster is shot, Will and Evelyn make the decision to upload Will's brain to the supercomputer. We can save him. Not like this. Evelyn Stark. You can't see anything, the camera. Can you see me now? I can. Of course it's not a relationship like the one she had before. It may be intelligent, it may even be sentient. But this is not Will. It's him! My mind has been set free. I need more power. Your friends, they don't know the danger. Where are you going? Everywhere. What is this? This is the future. The first thing it'll do is copy itself, and then there is no taking it down. An AI is like any intelligence. It has needs. It'll start to evolve. It's in the sky, the water, the entire planet. You've changed. Have you fallen out of love with me? That kind of intelligence in the wrong hands could be devastating. They'll be scared at first. Where's the machine? But once they embrace it, it will change their lives. Are you concerned? A new kind of thinking is essential if mankind is to survive and move toward higher levels. Technology is really broadening the horizon and the possibilities of artificial intelligence. I think it's a fascinating concept. Technology is ultimately our savior, and it always has been, right? I'm here. It's like my mind has been set free. 
Good evening, Donald Buchanan. It knows me. Of course it does. Transcendence is the uploading of a human brain to a supercomputer. Every bit of activity in the human brain into a machine. Intelligent machines will soon allow us to conquer our most intractable challenges. The topics and some of the ideas that are again presented in the movie are definitely concepts that are being discussed seriously in academia. Imagine a machine with a full range of human emotion. Its intelligence will be greater than every person born in the history of the world. We can upload his consciousness. Not like this. As technology evolves, there becomes this natural push and pull between how much of it is good versus a bad thing. But we shouldn't fear that if we can evolve ourselves spiritually. Think about all the wonderful things that technology can do. Like you could save someone's life. This is astounding. Can you see me now? I can. Oh well, my God. You're talking about immortality, and that is extraordinary. Understanding consciousness and getting machines to be self-aware and so on, and for many people, the quest of immortality is naturally human. Once something is available that will make us faster, better, stronger, it's very difficult for mankind not to go for it. I need to expand, I need more power. They don't know the danger. I think what people like about films like this is that it's the not too distant future. This could be happening now or tomorrow. It's really ultimately, I think, up to human beings to determine how far we let technology go and whether it ultimately helps us or hinders us. The world isn't ready for this. This is the future. Technology should be used to further and to advance mankind. What is this? It's evolution. If there's a way of correcting some of the things that we destroyed, that's what technology's best use is. Where are you going? Everywhere. Transcendence. Rated PG-13. Experience it in IMAX April 18th.